How's that? How about now? You guys hear me? Yes. Cool. Okay, OM report. This is on 5.17. We do a big order 5 allocation and it fails. And we get this, and I don't have enough information to debug this. I mean, maybe someone else can parse this better than I can, but this, this does, isn't terribly useful to me. One interesting thing of this to me is that we're doing an order five allocation from 9, 9p vertfs code in what looks like, uh, usually it looks like it's from the uh, uh, like reader code, but I'm not seeing that here. And there's not any big directories in, in my test setup. So why the heck is it doing an order five allocation? And this, what this tells me is that we've got places in the kernel where we're using ex an excessive amount of memory and no one knows because there's no good way to see who's allocating what today. I mean, debug, just profiling memory usage is kind of a nightmare in the kernel. It's a little bit better in user space uh, where you can, where you've got like TC malloc, but we don't even have anything like, like that. The page owner stuff is not easy to use and it's way too expensive to enable it most of the time. That's, that's a whole other thing that, that I'd like to see improve, and maybe we'll talk about that later. But for right now, let's maybe, what can we do with the OM report? I made a start on this. Here's an example of an OM report from my shrinker to text branch. So previously, in the OM report path, we'd only sometimes get information on, on slabs. And when we would, we'd get all of them, which would be like two or three pages. I don't need most of that. So I changed it to just dump the top 10 and in sorted order. Of course, we still need an actual name for that. I think that might be a bug in my code, though. <laughs> and look at this. Now we've got shrinkers. Now, hopefully, because I'm in the MM room, people are aware here that shrinkers are actually kind of important for debugging OMs because they're needed for member uh, reclaim. Yet, until now, we haven't had any good way of, of seeing like sh shrinker information not at runtime or in the, the OM report. Thanks to Roman, we're going to be getting this at runtime via DebugFS. And my hope is that via the pretty printer work that I'm doing, DebugFS and this report will be showing exactly the same information uh, on each, each shrinker. And we'll get a callback function so that instead of just printing the, the very basic information that VM scan has, every shrinker code can define that callback to print out its own inter internal information that's relevant for what objects can be, uh, can be reclaimed. Like, if your cache is completely dirty, of course you're not going to be able to reclaim. We don't have any way to see that today, but if you look at... I uh, didn't get you a good example. I defined a, uh, a text method for the, uh, the bcachefs one that, that does show like, how many objects are dirty, but unfortunately I can't show that to you. And this is only a start. 
I don't intend to do all this work myself, but I'm noticing that this code hasn't changed since uh, Johannes wrote it, but back in 2006 is when it looked like you added the, the show memory port. <laughs> so no one's touching this stuff. And I think that's the, the problem that needs to be fixed, is we need some better organization and some better tools so that we can just have better log messages and error messages and reporting. That's the end goal of the, the printer printer stuff that I was talking about in my BcacheFS talk yesterday. Should I, Matthew, should we talk about our, our crazy pretty printer? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So right now, let's, let's pull up a, uh, I need to drag this one. Yes, print buff is uh, going in a new direction. So I was looking through vsnprintf.c, and it turns out we've got lots of pretty printers in there that I didn't even know existed, because they're all used via this crazy uh, percent sign p syntax that's not discoverable. You can't c scope to to see where the, where the code you're calling is. And all these pretty printers are in this dumping ground that no one looks at except when they go to add something new. Pretty printers should be defined with the code that they're printing, not off in this dumping ground. So well, that- This is where you would look when you want to see a pretty printer. You there's one place to look to see what pretty printers are there. <laughs> well, it's called VS printer. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, Matthew's idea was that Here's the test code. So, we're going to have percent sign left parentheses, which is going to represent a function call. And then you'll pass the pretty printer, the function, the name of that function to printf, along with subsequently arguments to the pretty printer. So, we have printf test function. This is using the old calling convention, which then does some outputting. And now, instead of specifying like percent sign capital B, which I think represents uh, uh, B dev name, you'll just be able to just say call B dev name and then pass it the, ar the argument to B dev name. So we'll be able to have a million pretty printers and define them wherever you want. Uh, my experience in BcacheFS has been that getting into this habit of writing a lot of pretty printers, it, good begets good. Your log messages get infinitely better. It becomes a lot easier to write a new pretty printer when you've got pretty printers for all your little base types. I think life is going to get a lot easier and our, and our log messages are, are going to get better. And all that stuff in vsnprintf.c, we can move it to like where those types are, are defined. We'll be able to find that code with cscope. In the meantime, where was it? Aha. To do list. What else can you do with the, uh, the show mem report? Well, we could rate limit it 
right now sometimes I get it spewed like 20 times in the space of a second. I'm not sure that that's terribly useful. Showmem is uh, that report when we hit Noem, that's, that's seen by a lot of people, including end users, that want to understand why, why their system ran out of memory. And I don't think it's terribly useful to them either. So maybe we could introduce some better organization. Maybe at a top level, we could divide it up into kernel memory and user memory. Sometimes you run out of memory just because one user task has gone out to lunch. And if we do, uh, dump the top five or 10 tasks and sort that by memory usage, I bet a lot of end users would find that useful. Page allocator fragmentation. That could be useful. I was getting into some talks with Dave Chenner, and I think there's a bunch more stuff with shrinkers that we could add. Uh, with shrinkers, we can be report. Uh, is this working? Um, so actually, we used to. If you want to look back in the uh, Git log, we we used to print uh, the top X tasks, and uh, it was removed for some reason that I don't remember. But you, huh? Yeah, top tasks are not exactly. Uh, Say again. Free. Yeah. So uh, if you want to uh, dump all the tasks or at least some of them, that's not really an easy thing to do because. Uh, you need to do some task lists lock, uh, locking, and it can get pretty expensive, mm. especially if you have uh, hundreds of thousands of tasks running, which can be the case very easily. So, so that's one thing. Another thing that I wanted to mention slightly earlier well, that... If, uh, if we rate limit how often we're generating that report, that will help somewhat. Maybe yes. Uh, I, I can just tell that uh, we do that uh, on the UM killer. Uh, uh, report and that's really expensive and um, it can dump your <laughs> your log buffer to the point that essentially not even the whole OM report just gets there. Partial information can be useful but usually not all that much because uh, if you are not having a complete picture then you can draw a completely wrong conclusions from what you are seeing because uh, it might be not just the top consumers are the problem, but the sheer number of them, uh, at least from my experience. So, um, and also one thing that I wanted to mention earlier is that uh, uh, what should be in the OM report uh, really depends on the uh, out of memory situation you are facing. Because uh, if you are uh, failing on uh, GFP no weight allocation, that's mm -hmm. a completely different thing and shrinkers are likely not the primary information that you are looking for or any reclaim statistics. If you are failing on the high order allocation, that shrinker are, shrinkers are probably not the most important thing you should be seeing because it's usually compaction that is failing and knowing why the compaction is failing is very likely what you are, uh, you are interested in. and. Uh, well, yeah. that, that depends on fragmentation, which we, like, it could be compaction or, or we could just not have memory. But yeah. We don't really print information on fragmentation right now, so maybe that, if, we, if we add that, that'll get us a step in the right direction. Yeah, the, uh, we, we have been discussing that uh, on, on the mailing list already, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, what I was trying to point you out to is that um, the allocation failure context matters, and uh, doing unconditional stuff there is um, is probably not going to be very helpful in 99% of situations, except for very very limited ones. But uh, uh, what we currently have in Showmam is uh, mostly compromise of what might be useful, and it usually is. There are cases when it's not. I'm not sure whether that's really something that will help in general? Well, anything is going to be a compromise, but I think we can probably do better than what we're doing now. Uh, I'm looking at just below your shrinkers. It says add tracking to see what or how many slab objects are allocated versus how many are on. I'm thinking, do we, have a, do we already have like a watchdog 
timer. Like, so basically, once we see that a certain, basically a certain level where memory is starting to get constrained, and maybe uh, the la there's like we don't have much that we can reclaim, and we could say, oh, you know, there, there's there's not, nothing that looks, that looks like a watchdog in uh, the shrinker code or in VM scan. That might be a good thing to add. Yeah, so that way, once we see that we're getting to a point where, hey, we're sorry, you know, we're not reclaiming much, and we're running out of memory, and we're going to a position where we can have an OOM, and start, tra and then maybe trigger off tracing or something, and say, okay, what is starting, like, where's the cause of the OEM? So if we could see what's happening before, because usually, you, right now, it's like post-mortem. We hit OEM, or OOM, sorry, um, and... <laughs> Freudian I'm slipped there, but the uh, the uh, we hit the uh, OM and then we try to figure out what brought us to this point, and it's it's almost impossible to think. But if we had like a level saying, oh, we should start taking a look at what's happening, what's being allocated, what's wh who's the culprit. That might be more useful. Yeah, that that would be awesome. Except for uh, most in most cases, uh, that buildup is really, might be really slow. So it's uh, mostly mostly the uh, boiling frog kind of problem that uh, you are just doing fine until that very last drop, which just gets you over the board. And, and that's usually the victim rather than uh, the culprit of, of, of the whole buildup that has happened until that moment. Uh, so Another point I want to make is that debugging OM sucks in even the, the simple easy case. It sucks when I'm just running XFS tests in a single virtual machine in my optimized developer you know, setup, if I can't debug OEMs there, then we've got bugs that just aren't getting fixed. And those bugs are also showing up in these big complicated scenarios like you're talking about. Let's make sure that we can at least debug in the easy scenarios. And then there will still be extra bugs that show up in those, those harder, bigger, more complicated scenarios. But you know, let's get the easy stuff first. Yeah, I would lo love to see uh, uh, the report to be more useful. Um, uh, for example, uh, I myself have to post-process what the OM report is uh, telling me because uh, uh, you just see too many numbers. And uh, just to uh, wrap your head around that, you need to do some basic calculations. So for example, what I usually do is uh, I just check uh, the proportion of the uh, LRU versus slab memory. And if that proportion is like, uh, I can see 90% of the memory is just consumed by the user space, then it's very likely to be a problem of the user space. Having that called out explicitly would be really nice. So uh, I think that would be a, a improvement for somebody who is just doesn't have that processing hardware in, into the keyboard already. Yeah. Uh, maybe some of the, the stuff that you're calculating in your post-processing, maybe that could just be in the show memory report. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. maybe yes. Uh, I think we can argue what would be those thresholds when you start reporting here and there. That's usually much easier to be done from the user space when you see the whole thing and just put also, AWK I, or whatever you use for processing a lot of numbers, but... Uh, I would like to also default to our show mem report being more uh, uniform and less conditional. And just, like, there was no reason before to be dumping all the slabs uh, with two pages of output. If we just do a bunch of useful summaries instead of dumping all of some things, I think that'll be more useful. Uh, the show memory there's, report. There's always the corner case where you just, yeah. like, I wish I had this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but it could be, I think what could be useful is if it, if it at least follows, like, what is most pertinent and goes down to. Mm -hmm. Like, another thing that, uh, in, in the same line, what Michael said is, you know, we list total memory, we list free memory, and then we list a bunch of known consumers, but some consumers aren't known. And you have to add up everything that's known to figure out, oh, there's a large gap. Somebody's mm -hmm. doing page mm -hmm. allocations, and he's not reporting it. Mm -hmm. um, so, right, if we can start with the summaries, and then... Here, you might also be interested in this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that could go a long way. If, if we rate limit it, I think it's not a big deal to have a, a more verbose dump. But, and for ooms, it's fine, because they're not that frequent. But we have machines that do, do like page allocation failures, right? Because they're, they're allocations that don't qualify for oom, either because they're higher order or they're no weight or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
and then you have machines that are just in a, in a, in a loop failing allocations and it's just dumping the same thing over and over. That is kind of the useless. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, for the rate limiting, um, um, that's really nice thing in theory, except it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, because uh, rate limiting uh, can work only when, the, let's say, that critical section that you are rate limiting is really negligible in, in uh, how long it takes. And print key can be pretty slow if you are um, running to very slow serial consoles or whatnot. And we have actually seen OM reports to be essentially putting the machine to grind just by dumping that information because it just takes ages and rate limiting cannot really help you because the whole thing takes much longer than the time you are rate limiting to. So now, uh, well, if we want to ever do something about that, then we really have to come up with a I'm way to. This, this to, will have to be some custom rate limiting, not the like print K rate limited thing. That won't work for this. Yeah, it, it doesn't. So yeah, that that would be something that uh, would need to be done as well. So mm -hmm. um, what I'm trying to say that um, just dumping more information with the current implementation is not all that easy. There is quite a lot of work to be done, and also um, too much information can be tricky on its own because then you don't know where to look. So uh, I completely agree that having some high levels uh, initially to just tell you that. 80% of your memory is not accounted. So you probably should look at networking sus subsystem because <laughs> that's the usual suspect or something else. But you will, you will not do anything or you will have a hard time to find out much more because it's not accounted. So for, for that, I think, I don't think this exists now. Uh, as part of like the folio stuff, uh, Matthew's been figuring out what the actual type hierarchy is of our different page allocations we should probably be tracking memory usage by the actual type hierarchy. And I'd love to be printing that out. I, I was just wondering how somebody can allocate memory and we don't know that they allocated memory. Yeah. Well, there's just no, it's like you call a lot of pages and it doesn't, while. well, you know, there's the ones we account, you, you allocate pages and then you call code to tell VMs that, hey, I allocated n pages. If you don't do that, we just don't know. Okay. So, and uh, then you, so you know. should we not allow that? Should we have a call? That there, it's, there's a lot of call sites that you would have to update. Let me talk about my plan for solving that problem now. So right now we don't have any way of tracking memory usage by call site that's remotely efficient enough uh, to be enabled at runtime in production. And uh, it is possible to do this. There's a trick that the dynamic debug code uses. That I think everyone should know about. Uh, it replaces your PR debug calls with a macro that defines a static struct that it puts in a special ELF section. And then when the kernel starts up in its init code or when, a, or when you load a module, it walks that ELF section, treating it as an array, and adds every single PR debug call to debugfs. So now you can grep through debugfs and turn on and off individual PR debug calls at runtime. Super cool. Imagine. Uh, don't we have tracing, or do, why don't we use tracing for that? I mean, we do have trace hooks into page allocator, and yeah. that's the usual way how we, at least we, when we have customer problems that are reproducible, we just enable tracing if that's a I want something that's always on, and I can't enable tracing for every single memory allocation all the time. I want to just be able to look in debugfs and see file and line number. This has this call allocation call site has X number of megabytes uh, allocated, and pipe it through sort, and we can do this. Always I'm enabled on every server. Well, tracing's always enabled. I mean, it's, it's, it's configured in. You just have to put it in the button. Yeah, yeah, but you can't uh, have those tra those trace po tra points for memory allocations enabled all the time, and then user space then has to be the one to match up the allocation and free uh, trace events, and that's expensive in terms of memory usage and user space. There, there's ways to put in profiling or something attached to that. It would be pretty trivial to if you want to match up oh, locations without 
allocations and freeze? No, uh, everyone says tracing, uh, and tracing is great, but it's not the solution to every problem. Uh, one one first. thing you could do for that uh, to get some benefit out of it would be to use BPF and and uh, track a map by uh, call site. Yeah, and that uses tracing. Uh, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> So one thing, one thing with doing this, especially once you start involving user space, is that user space will trigger more allocations. Yep. <laughs> and so you have to be careful where the da that you, while you're tracing and recording what's going on, you, you don't recurse into allocations. So we, we, we tried doing this with BPF, but um, it gets hairy really quickly because you have, you know, you have process context freeing memory, and it's being interrupted by an interrupt that also frees memory. And then it's like, who gets access to the data structure, to the BPF map? And, and we start losing, we start losing uh, events. Um, so we, yeah, we've tried to have this, like, what, what's the outstanding memory allocations to have a, just a BPF map? And that just quickly fell apart. So wait, um, what's, the, what's the mapping? You're trying to match, like, just the uh, allocation to the free and by, like, the address? Yeah, just by the So BFM. have you used like, synthetic events? So a synthetic event is a way of creating, uh, attaching two trace points and mapping it by a field that's common among the two of them to create a third event. And then you could make a histogram or whatever you want off of it. And this works through interrupt context or whatever. Uh, it, doesn't, it does everything pre-allocated before you do it. And obviously it has a pool and if it runs out, it runs out, but. But we'd want to look for not those events. What do you mean? Well, because he's tracing allocate and free. We'd want the allocate and This means user space has to remember all the trace of points for, for every allocation that has not yet been freed. Right. That's, that's too much memory overhead. That's, I want something that can be on all the time so that it's actually there and already, trace, already collecting information when I run into a problem or something that I want to look at. Yeah. Uh, for driver like allocations, there's such a tool that's always on would be very useful also because there are many drivers that we are working with as third, par third parties. We don't have sometimes sources for them. At least to point, pinpoint that who is who is doing that would be very useful. Even though we have DevM API, but not many drivers use it. Mm -hmm. So such a well, I don't want I don't want to point point fingers, but yeah, a lot of actually not just them. It's, yeah. Um, that's uh, another point I wanted to make about um, adding or changing uh, OOM reports is um, I know at Google at least we do have scripts which parse those and kind of extract what's abnormal. So when we are changing we need to be very careful not to break those or if we are breaking, well at least they, they better be backward compatible so that existing uh, scripts don't break. Adding is fine, I mean we don't give uh, any yeah. guarantees that additional I, information is not going to break those, but it would be great if we can figure out a way not to kind of affect those. I'm, I don't really care about breaking Google internal scripts. I'm sorry, no, but the, but these are... I, I, I'm, I'm guessing not, not only Google does that, right? I know, but <laughs> I've, I've never been aware that our, our print K messages have been part of the user space ABI contract. Like this, this stuff, the... No, it it's, does, it's not. It should be consumed by humans, first and foremost. It should be useful to humans. And if it's not useful to humans because some people don't want to update their scripts, that's a problem. So I, I missed how the dev debug approach fixes your problem. Yeah, I got interrupted. Okay. Uh, <laughs> once we have uh, this uh, trick of a macro that defines a static struct in a special ELF section, we can use that to wrap all our KMLOC, uh, ALEC pages, et cetera, calls, and then pass the address of that struct into KMLOC or whatever, and then we can remember for each allocation the call site that it was allocated from so that free can decrement the right counter. So all we need is, and like this to be plumbed through like slub and the, and the page allocator. And they already have uh, provisions for tracking information per allocation for like the uh, page owner thing. 
So we just need to repurpose that, that stuff. And getting some help from the event people that are yeah. familiar with that code would be great. The page owner stuff is, has been really useful if, if the problem's reproducible, just because it's too heavy to run in production. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but I think the reason why it's so expensive is just it needs a lot of memory to store the full stack traces. Yeah. And just gathering the stack traces on every great, single allocation. But it's is usually really a expensive. lot more than you need. Yeah, exactly. So this goes back to the drivers, right? If you have a general direction where to look, right? Even if it's just like a, 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 a file and a line, or if you know the, the module where it's even coming from. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the, like, perfect would be the enemy of good there. Mm -hmm. um, I th yeah, I think having a, a rough direction in which to look at would be really useful already. My main goal is cheap enough to be enabled by default so that more people are looking at this stuff because, like, like I showed you from the, uh, the 9P allocation failure, if we're doing stuff that stupid, that means we're just not looking at our memory allocations. Okay, so yeah, we, we, we need to move on to the next topic, but uh, okay. th thank you, Kent.